Hello my lovelies, it's Erin here. They say that April showers bring May flowers, and that is absolutely true for my bullet journal, although every month brings flowers, if you're me. The inspiration for my May theme this year was this beautiful paper that I found at a craft de-stash market, so this was secondhand. I picked it up for three Aussie dollars, and I'm so sorry that I can't link you to it, but it is stunningly beautiful. Every other piece of stationery that I've chosen to include in this theme was chosen because it looked nice with this paper. That's basically how I choose all of my themes, to be honest, based around one thing. So a lot of the other stuff you'll see me using in this video is a hodgepodge of things from various hauls on my channel and some of it stuff that I've just owned for a long time, like these gold stickers here. There's something really satisfying about taking a bunch of elements from very different places and then bringing them together to make one cohesive thing like this. The spread we're starting on here is my cover spread for May. I'm going to have a quote page and also a May general normal cover page that just says May. And even though I can't link you to the paper that I used earlier, things like this stamp set and the pens that I'm using and lots of the stickers and stuff I can link you to. So anything that I can link you to, I will do so in the description down below. And some of them may be affiliate links just so you know, which would mean that I would make a little bit of money on the sale if you decided to buy something there. And that's totally up to you whether you'd like to do that or not. I can sometimes be a master procrastinator, so the quote I've chosen for myself this month is each moment is a place you've never been. Partly because I still have a little bit of post-holiday blues, to be totally honest with you. I haven't quite readjusted after my Europe trip back in January and February, which is really lingering, but also to tell myself every moment is worth paying attention to, you know? Just because a moment is taking place in my familiar hometown of Brisbane and not Paris or Edinburgh doesn't mean that it's not still important and wonderful. So a little reminder to myself to kind of stay present there. And I've used a green metallic Artistro paint marker in tandem with my Paper World Shop letter stamps in order to apply May and also my quote to these pages here. I'm really into the letter stamps at the moment, so that's how I'm going to do all of my headings throughout this setup. And if you're seeing some stuff on my table right now that you're thinking, wait, that looks kind of familiar. I feel like I've seen that recently. There's a good chance that lots of the stickers and other ephemera that make it into this video were part of either my grabby stationery subscription box review recently or my journal say review and haul video as well because I was just like, look at all of this beautiful stuff. I can't wait to use this. Why would I wait to use this? And lots of it was very cottage core, fairies, butterflies, that kind of thing. And I've been thinking about doing a theme like that for quite some time. And it was just May's the month. Now's the time. The little frame card pieces that I'm using for my headings here though, they are from a pack from Daiso here in Australia. I don't know if they're also in Daiso internationally. Unfortunately, Daiso Australia don't really do an online store, so you'll have to go in and check if your local Daiso has those. But please let me know if you do find them and we can then have matching journals, which is always fun. <laughs> One of the greatest things about using a very prominent paper like this is that it makes a theme very quick and easy to set up. We're already onto the calendar spread or monthly spread, depending on what you like to call it. And I'm feeling very organic, very loose this month. So I'm going in freehand with that same brush tip paint marker that I used earlier. I'll also use the gold one from this pack at different times. And I do have a discount code for you if you'd like to get 10% off on your very own order from Artistro of either these brush tip paint markers or something else from their store. You can use my code Erin to get 10% off your order. Ordinarily, I like to set up calendar lines with a fine liner, but I just thought it would be fun to do something different this time, a little bit more bold, you know? I've gone for a classic grid style calendar layout, so I have a box for each day of the month. I always like to start my calendars on Mondays wherever possible, so that's what this is, but if you prefer to do a week starting on a Sunday, you can absolutely do that. May starts on a Monday, which is always very satisfying when you can have that whole first week of the month sit on the one row of your calendar. It's just so satisfying. And I've included a row above every week on the calendar so I can put the number for each day of the week just above it and it doesn't eat into the calendar space for any planning because I think May is gonna be a very busy month. Now we decorate using more of the same paper and stickers and everything that you saw before. As I go through, I keep discovering more stuff in my collection so it's quite a hodgepodge of things that have made it into this journal setup but I've had such a good time putting it together.
I'm switching to my gold marker now to stamp just the initial for each day of the week above each of the rows or columns so that I know exactly which day is which. Even though I know my weeks always start on a Monday, I just like to have the visual reminder. I feel like it helps me. I'm a very visual person, so having that on the page just makes it feel complete and correct in my mind. And I am a very big advocate for changing your mind about where things should go on pages and peeling things up and layering things under. And so you'll see me doing quite a bit of re-sticking in this video. <laughs> Just before we get into the next spread, let's talk first about leveling up your career with today's sponsor, Skillshare. So many of us already know and love Skillshare for creative pursuits, but it's also a treasure trove of career-focused classes covering things like business analytics, leadership and management, marketing, and productivity. We're so lucky to be living in a time when a classic nine to five job isn't our only option. I've been self-employed for over a decade as a photographer and now also as a content creator. So I know how empowering and freeing, but also intimidating choosing a flexible career path can be. When I first launched my photography business at age 24, I had to learn marketing, social media strategy, time management, communication, all on my own. You don't need to struggle through it solo like I did. Skillshare literally has a curated list of classes called Build a Creative Career, with classes covering building an online presence, determining your strengths, going freelance, even negotiation and pricing. At just 15 Australian dollars per month, it's the most affordable investment in yourself and your future that you could make. A lot of you probably don't know that I have an Etsy store with bullet journal printables, but it's something I wanna focus more on this year. So I'm currently taking Parker Guard's class, building an Etsy shop that sells strategies for e-commerce success. It's all about making sure your Etsy store stands out, makes a memorable impression and communicates the right message to the right people. All of which are things mine could definitely do better and will do better very soon. But first I have to do a lot of thinking about my brand identity and my target customer. <laughs> If working nine to five isn't working for you anymore, you need to click the link in the description. The first 1000 people to use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Do you get really precious about beautiful things and try to hoard them and not use them? I'm trying really hard not to do that, but I actually bought this pack of this buttercream yellow paper because as much as I knew I wanted to use that beautiful floral vintage paper, I also didn't want to use too much of it, which is ridiculous because I actually have quite a lot. So I bought this little pack from Officeworks of yellow paper so that I could offset and still have something that really worked with the other color without having to use that paper all the way through the setup. And then I ended up not actually using anywhere near as much as I'd expected. I'm using my Fomemo MO2 mini printer to print my habit tracker calendars. I haven't done this in a while. So I'm very excited to have it back. And yes, I will put a link to this habit tracker template in the description in case you'd like to use it. It is numbered just for the month of May, 2023. So it will only work for this month. But if you'd like to download it and I don't know, use it as a template for your own printable, then please do. And I'd love to see if you do use it. So clearly this is a habit tracker we're setting up on the left page here with the yellow background. I've printed six copies of my calendar so I can track six habits and I'm just making sure most of my decorative stuff is down on the page before I stick the calendars down so I can make sure that they're not covered by anything because I need that space obviously to track the habits. If you want to use my calendars but you also want to track more than six habits, you might have to do it across two pages, across a double page spread, or maybe resize the calendar down a little bit to make it smaller because six is all I can get to fit at this size on an A5 page, but also six is all I need. So that works fine for me. I have a fair bit of space on the side of the page here, so I thought putting the heading on the side instead of along the top would be good, because then I can add some more decoration along the top and the layout will still feel kind of nice and balanced. And a nice balanced layout is always what I'm going for. I'm also using the same letter stamps again to letter the headings for each of my habits that I wanna track. I usually fill this in later, but I was enjoying using the stamps. So I was like, let's just do it now. And I'm leaving the last one blank because I always like to have space to change my mind about something or add a new habit to track, just in case. It's good to have options, keeping it flexible. 
I'm not usually a butterfly girly, but I'm making exceptions for this month and using quite a few of them from my, one of my grabby subscription boxes came with these butterfly stickers and I've gone through and picked again, the ones that go nicely with the printed floral paper from the first spread. I'm also introducing this Daisy Washi Tape, which is from the Washi Tape Shop's fragrance floral set. And now we're gonna move on to the mood tracker. See these scrapbooking doors on the left page here? They were completely the inspiration for this mood tracker and also kind of a little nod, a little throwback to my Hobbit Hole mood tracker that I did for September. When was that? 2020? 2021. Must have been 2021 when I went through a big Lord of the Rings phase because we watched it every time we were locked down. And that meant we watched it a lot. So I won't actually be using those paper scrapbooking doors. I'm just using them for the inspiration for this little illustrative ha uh, mood tracker on the right page here. The way this will work is I'll choose three green Tombow Jewel brush pens. I will assign each one a mood. And then for each day of the month, I will color in one little wood panel on this door in the corresponding green. And that will be the way I track my mood for the month. And at the end of the month, I'll have a really cute little cottage core door colored in green, representative of my mood. But even if I have a really crappy month, I will still have a beautiful mood tracker page all finished in my journal. And I love that. <laughs> I usually use the 03 Pigma Micron for most of my fine liner stuff, but I've jumped over to the 003, which is very, very small, to add the numbers for each day onto the mood tracker because I want them to be super subtle, like almost invisible. And I think they will be once it's all colored in. Speaking of coloring in, I'm going to add a little bit of color to the parts of the door that don't need to be part of the mood tracker. So this window that's at the top, it's kind of an, a semicircle transom kind of situation. And I'm also going to add some flowers that kind of pop out from behind the door just to give it a little bit of extra cottage core appeal. But I'm going to avoid the greens that I'll be using in the mood tracker when I color in the flowers around the sides just because I don't want there to be too much of the same thing and for it to be confusing about what was mood tracking and what's just decorative. So I'm going to stick to colors that match the paper again, more in the yellow and yellow green family and then green greens for the actual mood tracking colors. I hope that makes sense. Now that I have an idea of where all the functional elements of this page have to sit, I can add some extra decoration, so washi tape, some fairy stickers, some butterflies and so on, and I think it's really coming together. And I thought it would be fun to have the mood heading on the side, sort of mirroring the habit heading on the opposite page, so that's what I'm going to do here. Next I'm adding three little swatches of green at the bottom. These are the Tombos I'm going to use to color in the door throughout the month. And I'm writing down the number of each Tombow too, just because I have quite a few green Tombow jewel brush pens. So I wanna make sure I'm going back to the correct one each time. And I'm also assigning those each a mood. So a sad one, a neutral and a happy green. And now it's just time to color in all of these cute little flowers around the sides. and mood tracker spread is done so it's time to move on to the next combo of pages the one on the left here is going to be goals favorites and musings this page is a little snapshot into where i'm at in my life 
in that month, which I always think is fun to look back on. Goals obviously are things that I'm working towards specifically for the month. And if you're setting goals month to month in your journal, I really recommend you flip back to the beginning and look over your yearly goals and try and make your monthly goals line up with those and work towards those so that you don't get lost and forget what you were working towards. The favorite section is to record anything I'm into in that month. That could be TV and movies, it could be books, it could be specific foods that I'm wanting to eat a lot, uh, colors that I wasn't that into last month that suddenly I'm all about. So all sorts of stuff can go in there. And the musing section is like a very short form journaling snapshot into what's on my mind at that time. Things I'm excited about, things I'm worried about, observations, that kind of thing can go in that space. Obviously, I haven't left myself a huge amount of page space for that, but it's not the kind of thing that I like to go too in depth. I have a separate journal for when I want to have a whinge or a celebrate that I write my thoughts and feelings in that I don't share here on YouTube or on Instagram. So that's where those things go. But this is just my little uh, overview of who I am right now. And I really enjoy setting this spread up every month and using it every month. So maybe give it a go if it sounds interesting to you. Then of course we have Old Faithful, my spending log, which basically never changes. Sometimes I make it two tables with a little gap in between. Sometimes it's just two tables right next to each other. We're gonna do a little gap in between this time. And I'm just gonna line the top and bottom with some more of these stickers. They are from Journal Say. I've used them a couple of times in this setup already and they are so beautiful. They're like foliage with gold foliage accents and I just think they're gorgeous. And I also think they would make really good bookmarks. <laughs> funnily enough. Yes, I do track every single dollar that I spend over the course of a month in this table and then I tally it up by category and then I transfer it all over as data into an overall expense tracker at the beginning of this bullet journal so that at the end of the year I can see where literally all of my money went. And yes, it is a little confronting the first few times you do it, but it's also really empowering. It makes you think about where your money goes and I recommend it if you haven't given it a go because it's very, very useful. Headings for these columns are item, cat, which is short for category, and cost, so that I can assign a category to every expense as I write it in. Things usually like life expenses, which is, you know, paying rent or bills or whatever that needs to be. I have one for business expenses because I am a self-employed business lady. I have separate categories for car expenses and stuff like that. So however you like to categorize your spending that makes sense to you, do that. And I didn't want my heading getting lost on the background of those lovely florals. So I'm using some more of my yellowy paper to stamp it on. And I'm just going to tear that around the outsides and stick it down. I must admit, I have been ignoring my content planner for April, but I'm not going to ignore it in May. In fact, I'm not going to ignore it for April either. I just need to get organized and do my thing. I like to pre-schedule my Instagram content a month at a time in advance so that I don't have to think about it besides that one day when I schedule it all and write all the captions and stuff. And I also like to know what my YouTube videos are going to be a few weeks in advance, obviously, so I can prepare for them, especially if there are sponsorships to consider and stuff like that. So this content planner is where I brainstorm all of that stuff. It often doesn't even end up being accurate at the end of the month because I move things around because that's just the nature of social media. But I do like having somewhere just to get it all out of my head and onto the page. So even if it doesn't end up exactly matching what goes up on my socials for the month, just having it and using it makes it an easier process for me. I have two Instagram accounts for very different purposes and then a blog for my photography business and then also this YouTube channel, obviously. And I've been trying to do shorts as well as reels, as well as advertising my business so I can continue to make money. So it's just a lot. And having one place to organize all of that stuff helps so much. And yes, it is basically just a glorified monthly calendar spread. I just use it for a different purpose, but that also means that I don't have to clog up my other calendar spread with all of this data that doesn't actually matter around the events and birthdays and stuff that go on that original first calendar that we set up a few pages back. So I do like having them really separate, even though the spreads end up looking somewhat similar month to month. You know, you get it.
I'm using two separate washi tape sticker rolls for this video. These ones I'm currently using are the Green Oasis. They're from the Green Oasis sticker set, one of the rolls from that, which are so beautiful. They match so well with those stickers from earlier, the PET ones with the gold and the greenery, but also some little floral sprigs from the Autumn Bouquet washi tape sticker set too. So if you'd like to get your hands on those or anything else from the washi tape shop, you can use my code ErinSmith10 and get 10% off at checkout. And you're welcome. This next page is one I have never, ever, ever included in my bullet journal ever before. It's completely new to me. This is a meal planner page. So some facts about me. I am not a foodie. I am not someone who looks forward to eating unless I'm like traveling and going to lots of great new places that have new foods that I've never tried, whatever. I don't like cooking. I don't like thinking about food. So I really needed somewhere because I tend to just not eat or eat really boring or bad for me things instead of taking care of myself better. So I need this meal planner page so that I can think about what I'm going to eat. Kind of like how I approach my content planner. Think about what I'm going to eat, make sure everything's in the fridge or in the pantry ready to go, meal prep, and then never have to have another one of those awful vacant staring into your fridge wishing there was something better in there moment. I I'm just gonna plan it all out here for the course of a month. We'll see how it goes. I'll test it out for May. And if it works, then it will be maybe something I continue doing. We shall see. I've set it up as a table. So I've got a column for Monday to Sunday and then week one, two, three, and four. And there's really only space to write two meals in here. I'm okay with that. I'm not really a breakfast girly. So I will just plan out two meals for every day, which is honestly better than I do some days. And hopefully this will help me have some better habits going forward because your girl should eat much more frequently and much better than she does. And also this was a really easy page to set up. So that's always helpful. <laughs> This next one is also a new spread, a new page rather for me. And I've done something similar before. I'm going to still call it one line a day, which most people will do a one line a day page as here's what I did today, kind of a micro journaling system. Mine's going to be a little bit different. So I've been seeing lots on Instagram throughout April that April is Napo Remo month. So national poetry writing month. And poetry is something I was very into. If you look very carefully, on DeviantArt, you can find all of my terrible teenage poetry from 2002-ish. <laughs> and then I studied a music degree in composition, so I was doing a lot of lyric writing. And it's something that I really miss that was a huge part of my life for a long time that I just haven't even considered going back to for a while. So this is my way to ease back into it. Rather than one line a day of whatever, I'm going to write one line of a poem every day and then I'll have a poem for the month. And it doesn't have to be good. I'm not putting the pressure on myself to try and write something great. I just want it to be a little bit of every day mixed into something that at the end of the month is special to me. And so one line a day of poetry is how I'm going to do that for May. And I'm actually really excited about it. I wish I'd thought of that for April and I ended up setting one up that sort of started from the 8th of April and that's kind of just not on a pretty page or anything, but I'm enjoying it. So I'm excited to bring that into May as well. And now we've moved on to my first weekly spread for May. This will be the last one for this video. I'm just going with my usual go-to weekly setup that I stole from ruthie.journals on Instagram with these boxes. There's a box for each day. I have things always booked on the weekend, so I like Saturday and Sunday to have their own separate days because they're usually work days for me. And this layout really accommodates that in a very elegant way, which I love. It also gives you lots of room to decorate without putting on the pressure of doing a lot of big decorations. It kind of has these four little vignettes, five little vignettes of spaces you can put a few things and just make, it's like decorating those cube shelves, you know, those Ikea cube shelf unit things, except in the bullet journal format. So you can just put two or three things in each of those gaps. I'm using my yellow paper as a background for all of them. I really wish I had put some more of the floral paper in there because that would have been even more beautiful. And I think there's just a bit too much yellow going on in this page at the end, but that's okay because it only has to get me through a week, so it doesn't matter. But I live in my weeklies while the week is happening, so this is where things like to-do lists, um, event reminders, bill reminders, stuff like that, all of that goes here. 
Obviously May has more than one week, but I like to set up my weeklies, just, just the first one in the plan with me video. And then we catch up later on and set up the rest of the weeklies together in a live stream. So if you'd like to hang out with me and set up some weeklies in real time and maybe plan alongside me with your own journal, don't forget to hit subscribe so you can see when I schedule my next live stream. And here she is, let's flip through the entire layout together. It's all done, set up ready for May, and I can't wait to start living in this layout. I think it's so cute. Thank you so much for planning with me for the month of May 2023. I've loved having you with me. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you aren't already part of my journaling family. Turn on notifications if you'd like, and I can't wait to see you in another video next week. Until then, have a great one. Bye.